Hello everyone, I am Sujoy and this is my another video on the operation research subject. So this is the part 3 of the video where I am telling you how to solve a 5 cross 5 transformation problem by the MODI method or the modified distribution method. So in the part 1 of the video I told you how to check the initial basic feasible solution and how to check it for the degeneracy and also I told you how to calculate the opportunity cost and how to do the optimality test both for occupied cells and for the unoccupied cells and also how to check whether the present solution is optimal or not all those I have explained in the part 1 and part 2 of this video so in the part 3 that is today's video I will tell you how to do apply the looping technique for drawing the loop and for finding the optimal solution and I have explained all the rules for the looping in the part 2 of the video so if you want to watch part 1 and part 2 of this video link to them is given in the video description below all the videos are already uploaded on YouTube so earlier while calculating all the del ij values we got that our at del 1 1 position there was a negative value and also at del 5 1 position there was another negative value and both the values are same that is both are minus 2 so there was a tie so in case of a tie then you need to draw two separate loops and need to calculate them separately that we will do right now remember in case of looping first you have to check for the most negative value and we have to start the loop from that cell but in our case both the negative values are same that means we are compulsorily need to draw two separate loops so here at del 5 1 position there was a negative value that means del 5 1 means at the row 5 column 1 there was a negative value so according to the rules for looping the loop will start from the cell which is the most negative del ij value in case both the values are minus 2 next rule is that the loop will be drawn using straight line and the loop can bend only at the cells which have allocations so here our first bend will happen at this allocation cell next bend will happen at this allocation cell similarly at next bend we will have an allocated cell that means at each corner point of loop there must be an allocated cell and also the loop can overlap as in here as in here and also on loops path the loop can pass through or pass over any allocation cell but which will not be calculated since this is not a corner cell so here this cell this is an allocated cell through which the loop will pass although this cell will not be included in our calculation only the cells which are at corners will be inc included in our calculation so let's draw the loop loop will start from here straight line we have got a allocated cell so let's take a bend upward next here is an allocated cell take a bend rightward again allocated cell but here we don't have any allocated cell forward so we have to go downward again downward there is the allocation cell take a bend here next allocation cell take a bend we can't go forward since we don't have any allocations here so we have to move upward take moving upward again we have an allocated cell here so we can take a bend let's bend it this way we can't bend this way since there is no allocation again we have landed to this allocation cell and now we have to take a bend we can't take a bend upward since there is no allocation we have to come downward and coming downward we have ended to our originating cell remember the loop must be a closed loop that means the starting and ending cell of loop must be the same next among all the allocated values in the path of loop remember only the corner cell will be calculated so among all the corner cells find out the smallest allocated value so here 
starting from this cell there is no allocation at this cell allocation value is 5 next 3 next 3 this will not be calculated next corner cell is 2 allocation is 2 and here allocation is 8 again allocation is 2 and allocation is 2 so among all the allocations at each corner point the smallest allocation value is 2 so which we will take and next we will allocate that smallest allocation value to our first cell that is a plus cell so previously there was no allocation so we will make an allocation here with the value 2 next cell will be a minus cell so here we will subtract the smallest allocation value from the present allocation so present allocation is 5 minus 2 is 3 this is our new allocation the next going upward this was the minus cell next cell will be plus cell that is alternating order so this is the plus cell present allocation value 3 plus 2 is 5 new allocation next cell is the minus cell so present allocation is 3 minus 2 the new allocation is 1 again coming here this cell is a plus cell so present allocation is 2 plus 2 new allocation is 4 next cell is the minus cell so present allocation 8 minus 2 is 6 is our new allocation next cell is plus so present allocation is 2 plus 2 4 is the new allocation next cell is minus present allocation is 2 minus 2 is 0 is our new allocation that means there is no allocation and remember for each row the sum of all allocations must be equals to this value so here previously there were 3 and 3 6 and after reallocation the values are 5 plus 1 6 so they are satisfying here we did not make any change the so value, value is 2 here the value is now 0 so previously there was 2 plus 2 4 but now this is 0 but this is 4 so total allocation is 4 and that will be also true for the columns so previously in columns this value was 2 and this value was 0 satisfying this but here this value is 0 and this value is 2 so this is 2 here similarly for column 2 or column d2 previous value was 3 plus 5 8 right now they are 5 plus 3 8 that is true for all the rows and all the columns if the value is not matching then you can suspect that we have made an error while drawing the loop that is an warning sign to check whether the loop is correct or not so by applying all the rules for looping we can draw a loop like this so loop 1 is completed next according to the rule we have to calculate the ui plus vj value and the opportunity cost value for this newly allocated matrix and after the looping just write the matrix freshly without the loop but with the new allocation values that will be called the reallocated matrix so here for space saving I am not doing that I am just keeping this in this state so basically if you follow the rules you have to calculate the UI plus VJ value and the opportunity cost value for the new newly allocated matrix and check whether if you get any negative DLIJ value or not if there is a negative DLIJ value again you have to redraw the loop but now I will tell you a shortcut trick to find out the answer quickly and to judge whether your present loop is optimal or not but since the time is already around 10 minutes so this is the end of the part 3 of the video I will continue the calculation in part 4 so how was the video let me know in the comments below if you like the video please like and share the video that will definitely encourage me to make more quality videos in future and don't forget to share the video because sharing is caring so thanks for watching see you in my next video and still then stay connected by subscribing